This is Chicago. At the dawn of the 21st century, Chicago's media was dominated by a handful of major corporations. But a resistance movement arose to free Chicago's media from their clutches. One player in this movement is the Chicago Independent Media Center and its TV show, Chicago Independent Television. The Independent Media Center is a worldwide network of grassroots correspondents committed to using the tools of the media for promoting social and economic justice. You are watching this month's dispatch from the Chicago Independent Media Center. Welcome to Chicago Independent Television, a collection of video reports by citizen media producers from Chicago and beyond, produced free from corporate or commercial support or influence. I'm Joy Truskowski. In this episode, we'll join with a record-setting gathering of media activists and commemorate a long-standing labor strike against a crooked downtown Chicago hotel. We'll also revisit the impacts of the controversial policy known as Plan Mexico. And we'll hear about a student anti-war action at a suburban Chicago high school. Stay with us. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. Last November, 18 students at a Chicago area high school were threatened with expulsion for staging an anti-war sit-in. What follows is a short documentary by a local filmmaker about the event. Come your masters of war. You that build the big guns You that hide behind walls You that hide behind discs I just don't want you to know I can see through your masks Me and a bunch of my friends were uh, sitting around one day and uh, I kind of like, like it came to me like the day before in like a dream and then like I just like told them and I was like would you guys be willing to um, do a sit-in and they were they all agreed. My friend Matt Heffernan he brought the idea to us but then like we just like added to it. We just wanted to show you know that peace is possible and it's uh, it's not like a dream it's it can it's a reality. My friend Matt told me about it maybe like about a week before it happened but um, I didn't really like think much about it. I didn't think that it was a good idea if there's a couple people, usually high school students tend to chicken out of things, so I thought that the police would just come in and arrest everyone and nobody would be heard. I knew they would get mad. I knew that they weren't going to react to it well. Did I know they were going to expel me or try to expel me? No, I didn't know that. It was just uh, it was a good day. It was, it was a, like any other morning. I woke up and went and met up my friends and when third period rolled around, that's when things started happening. I arrived to school that day a little bit late and I saw them in the cafeteria and uh, I was like instructed by my dean to like just go straight to class and not fraternize with them. Well, I was just nervous like what, what, how the school was going to react to us. I went to class at third hour and that's when it started and we had a lockdown in the school. Second period, like all the thoughts that were going through my head, like, oh my god, is this actually going to go down? The plan was to meet at the beginning of third period and meet in the lunchroom. You see all the, like, once you, like, going towards ca like ca the cafeteria, like, people are just, like, building up. Me and my friends, we met there, and there was, like, about six 
or seven of us, and we were all looking around. We we're like, oh, I hope everyone comes, but we were gonna do it regardless if a lot of people showed up or not. As in, like, more people came, we just started to sit down. We were about, I don't know, we had to be at least like 40 people just sitting around. I thought, oh my God, they're all going to get arrested and beaten up by the cops because that's what usually happens during these things. Time went on and then the the, the deans came and they harassed us. They um, they told us to move because people needed to get in line for the for their lunch. The superintendent said that if we moved, nothing would no disciplinary action would be taken against us. I had joined after everyone else has moved. There were some like smart students with higher GPA joining. My counselor came in and she pulled me aside and told me that I was ruining my life and that these people with low GPAs had no idea what they were doing and that they wouldn't help me when I couldn't graduate high school. 220 rolled around and they started hanging out pink slips. On the pink slip, on the detention, it said at the bottom that we were at risk of being for written up for expulsion. I got a five day suspension and all the other students got a 10 day suspension and, and and expulsion papers. Because my school doesn't really have so much money, they need to keep their top students because the top students make the grade for the school. 38 students were suspended for an anti-war protest and 18 of them faced expulsion. In West Suburban Berwyn, two dozen students are about to pay a heavy price following an anti-war protest at a high school. Parents and students have been anxious to hear what punishment the school district would hand down. They were kind of like, targeting us and like telling like they would they bring out pictures of like and be like who is this student with like circles of like around my face he asked me do you know who organized it and i told him i'm like i think matt did it but i don't know i don't know for sure and you know what he did he put words in my mouth and he said oh matt did it i'm not going to judge anyone for anything jesse jackson came to our school after I got back to school, he was a major. He was he was a major part in our backup. That's the re I think that's the reason why we got back in school. Parents helped out a lot. They really were the, the, the driving force in getting us the back back into school. Getting up early. It put Morton on the map and also showed people that there's a lot more people against the war. We showed everybody how like. Bad the war is. It just, it just proved to me that, you know, like if you stand up and you, you say something, like people will listen. You're watching Chicago Independent Television. I see the soul of a nation. Must be true because I've seen it on TV. I am a soldier who survived the fear of facing Uncle Sam and saying, sir, no sir. I won't fight for lies. Forgive me, wounded soldier, for not being there to ease your pain. I'll try on this end to bring you home now. <laughs> 